Music fans, welcome back to last week's album. I am Derek. And I am Kevin. And before we go any further, Kevin, let's start things the way we always do, with a beer. Cheers. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, music listeners at home. All right. This week we are reviewing Dream Cave by Cloud Control. Cloud Control being an indie folk rock quartet uh, from Australia. Dream Cave is their sophomore album. Uh, their debut Bliss release came out in 2010. They've been uh, opening for a lot of uh, very high notable uh, acts. And so this is a pretty, uh, I guess you could say, uh, anticip highly anticipated album more or less. Kevin, what does Dream Cave sound like? Hmm. Great question, Derek. Um, I thought that Dream Cave sounds like Group Love meets Beach Boys meets Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. What do you think? Uh, I thought Dream Cave sounded like a more poppy, apathetic Portugal the Man mixed with Fleetwood Mac. So I guess we've got some 80s references going on there. All right, key tracks. Kevin, I had Dojo Rising... And Scar, what did you have for key tracks? I also have Dojo Rising, <clears throat> but my second key track is Dream Cave. Nice. All right, well, why don't you start us off with uh, the key track we shared, Dojo Rising. Yeah, sure. Um, I dug this one because it's, it's very sort of soft and mellow. There are these backing vocals and cymbal-heavy beats, spacey keyboards, uh, waning synths. And then these occasional vocal yelps toward the end, that's sort of where I, I hear Edward Sharp with these guys is mainly in the vocal range. Um, and then these resigned lyrics, you know, I could beat myself down, you don't need to bother. I did, if I did my distance, it will probably make me stronger. Um, and overall, just a sort of chill, dreamy, hazy um, track that I really dug. Why, why did you like it, Derek? Uh, Kevin, for a lot of the same reasons, uh, you know, I think you r really described well c kind of what I thought were the verses of the song, um, and the choruses I thought were kind of the brighter, the Edward Sharp, uh, if you mentioned earlier. However, I thought the uh, lyrics and the, the chorus kind of told a different story there. It was describing more uh, the firsthand uh, account of a half-hearted attempt at a relationship which, uh, you know, not that there's necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just, you know, best to be disclosed up front, which he actually does in the chorus when he says, uh, excuse me while I look for this. I don't want to break your heart. Should have told you from the start, but I'm lazy. So. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the gist of this song is this sort of apathetic love song, which is a weird headspace, but made for a good song. Yeah, very catchy overall. Uh, you, you know, I'll jump to my next key track, which was Scar. Once again, I thought it really was kind of fell into two different type sounds. Uh, it kind of opens with this almost haunted house type synth riff going up, uh, rising and falling, uh, soft, subtle uh, guitar strums, some ooze going on in the background, kind of creating this tense type atmosphere. Uh, but it you know, makes for a very stark shift towards, towards the chorus where it's much bigger, brighter sounding. Uh, although the uh, Haunted House synth riff, if you will, uh, kind of transitions very well into the next verse, they, it takes another turn in, in a bridge where it's pianos, drums, and vocals. Uh, just to, they covered a lot of sounds in one song, and it all just transitioned very fluidly, uh, and I thought it was very well executed. Yeah, that's one thing they do well, is mix a lot of sounds into one song. So I definitely know what you're saying there. However, for my next key track, I chose the title track and last track on the album, Dream Cave. Uh, it has this really nice falsetto cooing in the background, acoustic guitar strumming. It's very plodding, uh, percussion, and then, again, this vocal wailing, as I'm calling it, or maybe yelping, or just very loud... Um, uh, vocals, and to me it sounded like a throwback to almost 1960s teen idol pop, but if you were to fast forward that genre to today, 
this is what it would sound like. And I really dug it for that sort of oldies throwback feel, um, <clears throat> but also bring it into modern times. You don't hear a lot of bands doing that in such a, a nice way as this track uh, turned out to be. So that's why I dug it. Absolutely. I agree with everything you said there. I thought it was a very nice kind of hidden jab, hidden all the way at, as the last track. Uh, bef before we go any further, uh, let's go to best lyric. Mine came from uh, Dojo Rising, actually, some of the downtrodden, um, self-deprecating portion uh, that we were describing earlier. I can talk to your boss, meet him in the car park. Let's talk about logistics. That would make me feel so good. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, that sort of tongue-in-cheek uh, line there. I dig it. Mine is from uh, Dream Cave, the opening line. Late awake, I tried to escape. Your love won't catch me. Locked you in my turning page. I'll always be free. Um, I don't know, just sort of this esoteric love line, if you will, that, uh, that stuck with me. So that's my best. All right. So let's go to overall rating. Uh, Kevin, I'll go first on this. Uh, I'm giving this a four. I really liked it. I thought all each individual track really stood on its own merits. And really, as we were kind of alluding to earlier, they really covered a lot of different sounds, ranging from uh, the dreamy haze pop of the opening track Scream, Scream Rave to the sardonic 70s rock sound of Happy Birthday, which, surprise, is not how it sounds lyrically. And the electropop sound on Moon Rabbit, a lot of different sounds. I thought they really executed them all well and, you know, matched them all with a myriad of memorable melodies, to say the least. Nice alliteration. Well done, Derek. <clears throat> uh, for my overall rating, I'm going to go with a three. Like you said, I thought that they explore a lot of sounds and pack a lot into each song. Um, there's lots of depth and variety everywhere from this dreamy haze to 80s electronica to what I just talked about, modern-day teen idol pop. Um, but for me, there just wasn't enough cohesiveness overall. Um, they went in a lot of different directions, and for me, they just didn't all flow together that well. Um, the songs that I liked, I really, really liked. The songs that I didn't like, just kind of eh for me. But, like you said, overall, a solid effort. And I think, they're, I think that's just them trying to find their sound, you know, which is totally okay and expected on a band's second LP. So I like what they're doing, and I think they're on track. So three out of five. All right, so here you have it. Sophomore Slump, we say nay, this one's good. Check it out, Dream Cave by Cloud Control. Uh, thanks again for joining us at last week's album. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check us out next week on last week's album, talking about good music. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See you next week.